Well, hello, hello, and welcome back to Tammy's Table. Thank you so much for joining me on tonight. I'm up late tonight. I'm going to go ahead and get started on my pot roast so I have it for the next day or so to eat. Um, so basically, I have everything here on the table, uh, what I'll be using to go into my pot roast, okay? Um, as you can see, this pot roast here does not have a lot of fat on it. Reason why? Because I've already cut away a lot of the fat. Um, always keep in mind that whenever you buy uh, chuck roast or, you know, thick pieces of red meat or what have you, um, and chicken, of course, anything that has fat, just try to trim off some of that fat. That way you don't have to ingest that because um, the fat isn't healthy for us, although that's where the flavor is. A lot of the fl flavor is in the fat, but long term it's not good for us. But I've already um, cut away quite a bit of it. I left some here of course there's some marbling inside of the meat so uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started with letting you know what i'll be using um into my pot roast to season it so right here in front of course we have our onions so all this is going to bring good flavor we have our onions we have our bell pepper okay um we have oops we have our uh carrots here okay so we'll put the carrots and the potatoes in last because I don't want my carrots and potatoes to get mushy. My bag of um, Yukon gold potatoes. You can use any potatoes that you want. I always use the gold. I just love the gold. But, you know, I've been known in the past to use the uh, red ones as well and the white ones as well. But the gold are my favorite. But use whatever potatoes that you choose. And you don't have to get the big ones. I'm just going to get the big ones and cut them up. You can get the, the smaller ones if you prefer to do that. Um, keep in mind, you don't have to have carrots in yours. You can just have um, pot roast and potato. Um, you can add mushrooms. So you can do how you see fit to do. Same thing with the, the veggies. You don't have to have that. But if you want good flavor, very important that you keep in mind to add those to your pot roast. Okay, so once I get my pot roast over to my pressure cooker, because that's what I'm going to be using tonight. I'm not going to be using a uh, crock pot, although you can. And I suggest that if you're very, very busy and you want the pot roast uh, meal, then the crock pot would really work really well in that in that area because you don't have to watch it. You know, you can just put it on, set it and forget it type of thing. I'm going to be using my pressure cooker. Okay, so my pressure cooker um, it just cuts back on a lot of time, okay? Uh, back in the day, we used to do pot roasts, you know, in the oven or what have you, and you in there all day. So the pressure cooker, Instapot, those um, types of um, kitchen, um, um, you know, um, pots and whatnot that they have out in the market now are really, really good uh, to save on time, okay? So we're going to be putting some beef broth in for flavor, so I'm going to use beef broth. Now you can use water. If you don't have this, you can always use water. You'll just have to season it, you know, and, you know, flavor it up because, you know, water doesn't have any flavor, of course. So if you do use water, keep in mind, you have to double up on your seasonings. So I am using beef broth. I'm going to also use beef cubes. So I'm going to use about three of these. I'm sorry, not three. I used that in my other recipe. I'm going to use about six of these. So about six of these into my pot roast as well. And it's just like a, a beef uh, broth base. Uh, it brings more flavor, more so than what the broth does. It's like a base, okay? But it's going to uh, melt down these little cubes. It's going to break down. It's going to add more beef flavor. And I'm going to put some tenderizer on my meat. I don't like tough meat. I do not like tough pot roast. I don't like chewy pot roast. I want it, you know, pretty much falling apart, you know, once once it's done. That way I can enjoy it. So I'm going to put some tenderizer on it. Keep in mind, if you do use tenderizer, you only need a very small amount because this has quite a bit of salt in it. So I don't have salt to add to my pot roast because I'm using the other seasonings. As I mentioned before in another video, all the seasonings have some content of salt, so be mindful of that. So I'm going to use this to help break down my meat as it, cook, as it cooks to make sure it is tenderized, okay? Black pepper. I'm going to use black pepper. Let's see what else I have. Garlic powder, of course, the onion powder. 
I'm going to be using some savory steakhouse seasoning. Okay, so I'm going to put some of this in. This is really good. Add uh, good flavor to your meat. I'm going to be using some basil. And I also have thyme. I usually use one or the other, sometimes a little bit of both. It doesn't hurt. Both of these herbs are really good. Later, I'm going to be putting some tomato paste in here. Now, tomato paste is going to bring me that. It's going to ha have that taste that is just... It just hits the spot where everything comes together. I, I can't really explain other than that because my pot roast is not going to be gravy gravy based. Mine's going to have like an orange um, juice to it um, because the tomato paste is going to play into that. It's going to bring this orange look and I really uh, it just gives a good flavor. I have a little bit of red cooking wine here so I'm about out so I had to buy another bottle because I use it quite a bit, and then when I do my pot roast, that is. Worcestershire sauce, I'm gonna use that. Now this this gives a, gives a really good flavor in red meat. Um, What else I have? Roasted garlic and herb. Again, very good seasoning. And I'm gonna put a stick of butter in. Okay, stick of butter. And I have back here some chicken flavor bouillon. This, even though I'm not cooking chicken, it does wonders for my pot roast. Okay, it, I know it sounds weird, but trust me, okay, it does wonders. So I put a little bit of this in here along with everything else, and it all come together, and it's really, really good. Really, really good. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, what I start, what I normally do for my pot roast first is I start stabbing it, okay? with a fork or a knife just to make sure that when I put my seasonings on that they go down into the meat. We want it to go down into the meat, okay? So you can taste those flavors in and through it, okay? So I just basically go like so. And if, when I put that tenderizer in there, that's going to help out even more because I'm already stab stabbing the meat. And, you know, that's kind of helped with breaking it down somewhat. And then I add the tenderizer. So it's going to be really, really um, tasty. And it's going to be um, mouth-watering. Okay. And. And my meat is like this because, like I said, I, I cut away quite a bit of fat. So it was all together when I took it out the pack. But I, I can't eat that fat. I just can't do it. I can't do it. So what I'm going to do now that I've stabbed the meat. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is add my tenderizer, okay? So I'm going to add enough where it's going to do the trick to break down the meat, but I don't want to overdo it, okay? And I know it may seem like I'm putting quite a bit, but this is a thick piece of meat. So I got to make sure that it is tenderized once it starts to cook. Okay. So hold tight, let me change my gloves. Alrighty. Um, next, I'm going to just go ahead and add the other seasonings here. So you can now work with one hand because I don't want to cross contaminate. 
And let's see. Onion powder. My garlic powder. Okay, I think I have all of those, and then I'm going to put a little bit of Alright, so I just did everything on one side, and then I'm going to massage it all in, get it over there into the Instapot, and we're going to sear the meat. And a lot of this is going on my gloves, so it's going on the back side of the meat here. Once it get into the, the pot, it's going to distribute into the beef broth mixture that I have. You want to make sure your meat is well seasoned. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is head over to the Instapot or my pressure cooker, shall I say, and sear this meat, okay? So I'll meet you over there. Hold tight. Okay, so as you can see, this is my pressure cooker here, and I have the pot roast inside and it's searing, just trying to get a crust on the meat, and also as a uh, really good flavor to make sure to sear before just you know cooking the meat so as you can see the meat is brown quite a bit and it has a bit of a crust on the outside here okay. so we're gonna take it up in a few minutes here and start adding everything to the pot and then we'll let you see what the finished product looks like um, I've seared the meat for roughly seven to eight minutes. It's a pretty thick piece of meat, so and I have just about another minute left. Okay, so I'll be right back, and we'll go ahead and put the pot roast together for you. Okay, so the meat is done, and this is it right here. Um, it's done searing. Um, so we're going to go ahead and add all the veggies to the pot, and then add the meat back to the pot, and we're going to let it go. Um, the answer pot, I usually set it for about 40 minutes, um, just to make sure, um, that it's good and tender and cooked, you know, all the way through like I like it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add in my onions first, okay? So we're going to add the onions in first and we're going to follow it with the bell pepper. Alright, so I'm going to go behind it with the beef broth. And we're going to use all of this, okay? It smells good already just with the searing. I can smell the onion and garlic and everything. The herbs smell really, really good. 
Okay, we're gonna go behind it with those beef base cubes. I'm using six, let me just put those in. All right, we're gonna go behind it with some Worcestershire sauce. Again, I don't measure, put how much you feel like you need for your dish. So I just put some in there and I recommend if you don't measure, just put you some in there. Taste as you go if you have to. I've done this so many times, so I'm, I'm accustomed to about knowing what I want in my pot roast. All right, so we're gonna go behind that with red cooking wine, should I say. Um, the tomato paste put about a half a can of this. All right, and we're going to go with that. I did find some thyme, so I'm going to put some thyme in. Basil. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and put our meat in, and then I'm going to add a stick of butter. And you want all the goodness from that searing. Okie dokie, we're gonna go ahead and put the butter in. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and cook. That's what it looks like. Okay, so we're gonna let this cook about 40 minutes in the pressure cooker, okay? Um, about 40 minutes, it should be done, and I'll show you the finished product of the pot roast. Okay, so our pot roast is done cooking. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So as you can see, it's very, very tender, very tender. So we're gonna go ahead now and add in the potatoes and the carrots. So we'll just drop these in on top. Add in the carrots. And we're gonna give this about two minutes. That's all it's gonna take in the pressure cooker. And it's gonna all come together. I'm just gonna to top it with some parsley here. And I'm going to bring you over so you can see. So that's what it looks like. And I'll be right back with the finished product. Okay, so this is the finished product of the pot roast. Doesn't that look delicious? So yeah, this is the finished product. And I'm going to show you just how tender this meat is. So I'm using tongues. And you see how I can just pull that right apart? How tender that is? With no effort. I'm actually just picking this up and it's literally falling apart. Okay, and that's what you want. Okay, now I use my pressure cooker um, and cook this in a very short amount of time. Keep in mind, you can use a, a crock pot, but if you want to cut down on some time, Pressure cooker instant pot will be your go-to. Um, so you can also uh, use the oven like we used to do back in the day if you so choose to. But I would encourage you if you are able to, to invest it into a pressure cooker or instant pot for this delicious meal. 
Um, I actually used some red cooking wine along with some tomato paste to make this beautiful orange orange uh, liquid here that I cooked in earlier for my pot roast. I showed it to you and once it all come together, this is what it looked like. And it's just a, a really good, savory, delicious taste. And I'm just going to put some over the meat here just to give you an idea of what it looks like. And you see how good that looks? Some people use gravy. Now, I'm not using the gravy this time. However, I have used it in the past. But I, I really like this tomato paste mixed with the cooking, uh, the cooking, the red cooking wine. So I encourage you to try that as well. All right, and thank you so much for joining me here at Tammy's Table. We look forward to sending you more and more delicious, quick, and easy meals from my table to yours. Happy cooking. We'll see you next time.